So, Sue, that actually brings us to our next question. And I'm going to actually, uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to start with you briefly on, on this, but uh, Sue actually has a master's in, in it, uh, organizational psychology. And so the next couple of questions are really about behaviors and prerequisites. But, Sue, if you could identify the top, you know, four or five prerequisites that really must be in place before you can have a, an effective incentive program, what would they be? Well, it's it's interesting because I'm sure um, I'm sure I have my you know top four or five. I'm sure David, you have yours. Courtney has his. Every single um, owner in a company has their own what they would believe to be their prerequisites. Uh, first and foremost, though, is I think, and we will discuss it a little bit later as well. But the culture of the company really has to be primed and ready for this, which means that starts with the. If you're still in a first generation um, ownership, that starts with the founder. That founder has to be ready, willing, and able, has to be prepared for uh, how they want to put an incentive program together because there's a more personal buy-in at that stage, right? That, that founder has been uh, in charge and the owner the whole time. Um, things may have been very subjective as the company has tried to scale and grow and become more sustainable. But the culture of the company really is one of the very first things to take a look at. Another uh, very important one is, do you have the cash flow to do it, right? You've got to be able to, assuming it's in a cash-based incentive program where people are actually going to get profits of the company back out, do you have the cash flow to be able to pay that out on a weekly, biweekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual basis? Uh, that is critical. If the money's not there, there, you know, you, you can still come up with an incentive program, but there needs to be another way to incent people if it's not going to be that. Uh, and really, the third big one is buy-in from the rest of the organization, uh, certainly from current leadership, but the leadership that is next in line, right? Those that are swiftly moving up in the organizational chart. Uh, do they buy in? Do they understand what it means? Is it completely um, understood in meetings? Can it be openly discussed? And does it make sense to all of those? Getting back to the whole uh, the, the justice side of it, right? Is it fair? Do people really understand what it is? And then with that is, uh, of course, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, is having a well-defined, written, formal, uh, can follow the bouncing ball. People can, you know, almost insert your name here, insert your activity here, and the calculation will come out uh, the same, regardless of who you are, if you have the same position and all of your uh, variables remain the same. So it really does start at the top, and it starts with many of the intangibles and gets down to the physical writing of the program. But to me, the, the big three are, are the culture, the, the cash flow, and then the uh, organizational buy-in. So, Courtney, do you, uh, I'm sure you see some difference in that. <clears throat> some difference, maybe uh, really, really not much difference. I would say that uh, you absolutely have to start with the culture of the company. Who are you? If, if your company's culture is one that has been develop, developed over the years as we, we truly care about the best interest of our employees. Now, not that we say that we do, but we, we truly d demonstrated behavior, right? This is going to be much easier for you. If that is your, the heart of your company is to um, have, your, have your employees be actualized so that they are, you know, they're succeeding in their career and uh, your incentive program is designed to, to support that, but you haven't actually done that before, you have to start there. You have to start with, this is, this is the kind of people we want. And so that would be my, I think, probably number two prerequisite, which relates very much to what Sue said, is, is education, right? You start with the end in mind. Who are we? Where do we want to be as a company with our, you know, with our employees and every functional group? with our customers, right? Who, who are we? What's the market that we serve? Well, who are the customers we serve? Who are our employees that we serve? Um, it's really a outward looking perspective from the organization. 
you know, to the to customers, to employees, all the way down. And what happens though is as you start to build this program, which is really hard. I'm, I, you know, Sue and David and I um, will will tell you if this is this is not an easy thing to do. It's very challenging. The 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 question is is where the, whether that effort is worth the reward. I submit that the the clients and contractors with whom we work or have worked um, over the years who have put in an effective incentive program are some of the most profitable, sustainable organizations in construction. Um, the opposite is true. So if you, if, you, if you say, well, just give me the incentive program that this other company that did it really well, just give me a, give me a template for that. If you try to do exactly what someone else did, you're likely to fail because there is always what Sue talked about, this, this iterative process that you go through, um, defining what the, the, the outcome, the, you know, starting with the end in mind, what are the behaviors that we need from executive management? What are the behaviors that we need from um, our uh, mid, mid-level managers, from our field supervision, from our craft workers, what are all those things and do they align? And it's not easy to define that, but once you do and you start, you can then work your way back into some specific quantification. You know, I'm very big on quantification, but there is this, the quantification needs to be built around this alignment from top to bottom and bottom to top uh, of who we are, where we're going. So. You know, and I actually love what Sue said about the, the financial management. You, you have to plan for the, the financial requirements of this. If you're, you say that we're going to pay a quarterly or monthly or weekly, like in some cases we have uh, clients that uh, do weekly compensation uh, field incentive programs for their field teams, well, if you're going to do that, you absolutely must be planning, be a fantastic planners at every level, and from the field through senior management, and particularly in financial management, because that's that's a cash flow requirement. Um, it's uh, uh, you, we have to, you have to think about those things, and then um, something that Sue says quite often that I really appreciate is you know clarity. You know, people understand it. In fact, it is so it is so well defined they cannot possibly misunderstand. That's the goal. It's really hard to achieve that goal, but you you can get pretty close to it. Uh, when we when we define our incentive programs that align all functional groups, they're perceived as equitable, right? Which is the other one that we need to uh, uh, have, uh, have as a prerequisite. Uh, but they're all aligned. They're equitable. And they're clearly defined so that I can I can look at my work outcomes and my work behaviors and say yes this aligns perfectly with where we're going as a customer and in the functional groups around me above me below me beside me. Excellent insight. The, the only I will, I'll add on uh, diving into culture. I'd say one of the biggest aspects of the culture that that has to be there and where we start to see incentive comp programs break down the most, I think, is trust in trust in your leadership at, at all levels, right? So if you're a crafts person, yep. absolute trust in your foreman. If you're a foreman, trust in your superintendent or general foreman, you know, so on and so forth, all the way up. And and I would dive into uh, Brene Brown is probably the the leading expert, no, no, no relation to me, I, I, I wish. Uh, but anyway, she's the leading expert in, uh, in, some, in trust and, and some of those, those real critical um, things that she has a great uh, video where she breaks down trust into very specific components. That, and it's, it's an excellent way to look at your team and start to help to diagnose if there's a trust problem. Because you know, getting back to those terms of uh, equitable uh, or distributive justice and procedural justice and everything, that does come down to trust within your leadership. And I think that the second element that is often missed is making it fun. Okay, winning, winning is fun, and business is the most exciting game there is to play. And, and you think about yesterday, you know, yes, yesterday is Super Bowl Sunday. So depending on when you happen to be watching these, just say, <laughs> yes, yesterday was a 2019 Super Bowl. And 
winning a game is fun. Playing a game is fun. And the, and the fans are cheering and, and, you know, depending on who you're rooting for and everything, maybe your team won, maybe your team lost, but there was a lot of energy going, going into the game, throughout the game and everything like that. So regardless of your incentive comp program, be, find ways to make it exciting and fun and always use the, whatever the rewards are to help people smile a little bit more, if that, that makes sense, remind them that winning is fun.